Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 169.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released April 15th, 2015, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Capture Creatures number 3. The mystery is only getting stranger, but as our heroes are about to learn, maybe it's not their job to save the critters. The critters just might be here to save them. It's going to be a super fun ride as these creatures turn up the heat, literally. Next, we have Eternal number 404. New life gave the world eternal life, but now their hold on society is breaking down and chaos will reign. Amidst the turmoil, former New Life agent Rathman and his ward Violet try to find peace, but what sacrifice will Rathman have to make for Violet's future? We've also got Giant Days number 2 of 6. When Fresher's flu strikes the dorm, no one gets off easy. Daisy enters a one-sided relationship with an off-brand Polish cold cure given to her by Ed Gemmel. Susan is forced into nicotine withdrawal, and Esther becomes incapable of distinguishing fever dreams from reality. Death stalks the dorm halls by night. Next we have Hex number 9, new story arc. Forever at odds with the harlot, Lucifer has always resisted being her heir. Now everything is changing and Lucifer's fate can only be altered by the most unlikely team, Raina and Bob. We've also got Lumberjanes number 13, special standalone issue with original artist Brooke Allen. Ever wonder how the Lumberjanes first met? Take a trip back to the first day at camp and see how their friendship to the max got started. Next we have Peanuts number 27. With the excitement and love we got for our oversized issue 25 special, we wanted to treat readers to another full-length adventure. Coming in at 22 pages, Get Well Soon Charlie Brown will remind readers why we all can't help but love good old Charlie Brown. We've also got regular show number 22. At a local nostalgia night at a comic shop, memories of the weird movies Rigby saw as a kid begin to return. When he and Mordecai search the internet to find more details, they discover a strange code hidden in the message boards. And we've got Sons of Anarchy number 20. Tensions are building between the Sons and the Mayans, and ex-prospect Dylan teams up with the ragtag crew of small-time criminals in his hometown to get revenge on his former MC. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Archie vs. Predator number 1 of 4. America's favorite team meets the galaxy's fiercest hunter. Archie and friends hit Costa Rica for spring break, where party games and beach games are soon replaced by the most dangerous game. What mysterious attraction does the gang hold for the trophy-collecting Predator, and will the kids even realize they're in danger before it claims them all? Next, we have BPRD Hell on Earth number 130. Agent Johan's alienation from the other BPRD agents after a horrific mission causes him to take drastic measures. Will the other agents tell Kate what really happened? What will happen to the ghost agent? We've also got Dark Horse Presents number 9. Sergio Aragona's group gets involved in politics, and that's not good for man, woman, or child in the final chapter of The Kids Who Would Be Kings. Plus, Victor Santos's spy master, Black Kaiser from Polar, came from the cold, joins an espionage team set to infiltrate a dangerous organization, but can he trust them? Who will betray them? Make sure to look out for Polar, Eye for an Eye, the second spy noir collection of Santos's celebrated webcomic in stores this month. New chapters of Fred Van Lent and Gaio Valanova's Green, Alex DeCampi and Jerry Ordway's semi Automagic, Brendan McCarthy's Dream Gang, and Mike Grell's Tarzan. Next, we have 8, number 3 of 5. As Dr. Hammond, the Black Ops soldier Collins, tries to survive in the prehistoric past, the fierce warrior Neela and the chrononaut Joshua attempt to convince the Rebel Council to take up arms against the tyrant before he releases a dangerous scourge and wipes them all from the face of the meld. We've also got Gru, Friends and Foes, number 4. The year of Gru marches on as Gru marches right into Arcadio the Hero. Arcadio's in the protection business, teaching villagers how to protect themselves from dragons, but he should be teaching them how to protect themselves from Gru. Feather-brained barbarian thrills from the award-winning team of Sergio Argonis and Mark Evanier with Stan Sakai and Tom Luth. Next, we have Shaper number 2 of 5. 18-year-old Spry has just learned that he is a member of the hunted race of shapeshifters known as Shapers, and that his newfound parents have been captured by the all-powerful Caliphate. Determined to rescue his parents, Spry discovers that the best bounty hunter in the galaxy owes his mom a favor. And we've got The Strain, The Night Eternal, number 8. F and the other rebels make a plan to destroy the Master, but the Master has plans of his own, and a traitor in the rebels' midst is revealed. 
From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Battlestar Galactica 6, number 3 of 5. Alone and on the run, Eve begins to piece together the fragmented memory swirling in her head as the time comes to face the truth. She is a Cylon, but what does that mean for her life and her purpose? What other lessons must she learn before realizing her destiny? And can anyone help show her the way? Witness the birth of a Cylon from the inside in this enthralling sci-fi adventure. Next, we have Django Zorro number six of seven. After a tense run-in with the Archduke's soldiers leaves Diego wounded, Django finds that he must step into the black costume and mask to operate in Zorro's stead. He soon discovers that what he thought is a simple bodyguard job has forced him to confront a grim and all-too-familiar enemy, the specter of slavery. Meanwhile, the ever-wily Diego lays the seeds of a trap for the greedy Archduke. Quentin Tarantino's first original foray into comics draws closer to its dramatic conclusion, scripted by Eisner Award winner Matt Wagner, artist Steve Pohl, and colorist Brendan Wagner. One more issue to go until the grand finale. We've also got John Carter, Warlord of Mars, number five. John Carter has crossed the vast deserts of Mars to find his beloved Dejah Thoris, but have they been reunited only to die together? John's sworn enemy, Union Officer Captain Joshua Clark, will not rest until the Warlord of Mars is dead. Writer Ron Mars continues his claimed run as Invaders of Mars builds towards its epic conclusion. Next, we've got King, the Phantom number two of four, Global Sabotage. The Phantom hunts the mysterious Singh group, an organization bent on stopping crucial recovery efforts due to Ming the Merciless's failed attempt to conquer Earth. Will the Phantom discover Singh's ultimate goal, or is it already time to choose another ghost who walks? Behold Tumbling Wonders from Brian Clevenger and Brent Schoonover. We've also got Legendary Vampirella number 3 of 6, alliterative action as Vampirella faces and fights corruption with Kurtz, romance with Reshendel, and violence with Van Helsing. Hensow's plot is in motion, Vampirella's secrets are revealed, and the moral of the story is never let Dr. Moreau give you a haircut. And we've got Shaft number 5. The bodies have been piling up as private detective John Shaft has been searching for the missing Marisol Dupree. Now that he's found her, all the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fit into place. Shaft finally knows what is going on and why so many people around him have died. He thought he was done fighting wars. He thought he was done with the killing. But he was wrong. For men like Shaft, there's always a war to be fought, and the killing always comes easy. From IDW Publishing, we've got Dave number 3 of 5. The aliens infiltrate Phase 2 as Dave's life unravels from a performance review. Desperate to save Earth, Dave tries to assemble his old crew. Next, we have G.I. Joe Snake Eyes, Agent of Cobra, number 4 of 5. Snake Eyes' mission for Cobra has been severely compromised. His target, G.I. Joe, and even the Arasha Kids are now hell-bent on stopping the Ninja Commando at any cost. We've also got Judge Dredd Classics, The Dark Judges, number 4 of 5. Classic tales of Judge Death and his brothers Fear, Fire, and Mortis come to life in this remastered and colorized series. Next, we have Millennium, number 4 of 5. Frank Black thought the Millennium Group was defeated years ago, but the organization has resurfaced with his daughter in its crosshairs. We've also got Monster Motors, The Curse of Minivan Helsing, number 2 of 2. Undead cars and trucks driving the earth. One bite will turn any machine into one of them. Their numbers are multiplying, their hunger is growing. They are zombies, and they are about to descend into the sleepy town of Transylvania, Kentucky. But don't worry, genius mechanic Vic Frankenstein and the famed monster car hunter Minivan Helsing are teamed up to stop the Night of the Driving Dead. Next, we have My Little Pony Fiendship is Magic, number 3 of 5, the first My Little Pony miniseries event. This month-long weekly limited series explores the secret origins of the Equestria's greatest villains, the Sirens from Rainbow Rocks, Equestria Origin Revealed. We've also got October Faction, number 6, Fred and Family Must Confront Robot Face Once and For All, another macabre action issue. Next, we have Star Trek number 44, Eurydice Part 2 of 2. The five-year mission leading up to 2016's blockbuster Star Trek movie continues here as Captain Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise find themselves in the clutches of the Dark Market Syndicate deep in the Delta Quadrant. Don't miss this all-new story produced in association with Star Trek writer-producer Roberto Orsi. We've also got Transformers number 40, The Combines Have Arrived, Starscream wrestles for dominance with Optimus Prime as surprising reinforcements approach from the Lost Light. And we've got X-Files season 10 number 23, The Syndicate is returned with familiar faces and a new leader, their first order of business, shutting down the X-Files for good.
From Image Comics, we've got 68 Bad Sign, number one, one shot. In December of 1968, a violent random serial killer launched a spree of terror on the San Francisco area. On February 13th, the living dead rose and turned the entire world into a slaughterhouse. Now, hidden away in a derelict warehouse deep in the Butchertown district, a human monster continues his bloody work, taunting the few remaining cops and hunting humans without fear in a city of the damned. Next, we have Chrononauts number two. Corbin Quinn and Danny Riley have become the world's first time travelers, but not all goes according to plan when the two go rogue in their own era hopping adventure. With the world watching, the buddies get mixed up in an eon's worth of sticky situations while some of history's scariest villains and their bosses back in the present day are determined to track them down. We've also got the fade out number five. The second act of Brubaker and Phillips' biggest hit ever begins with a bang. Someone knows who killed Valeria Summers, but can our heroes find them without exposing themselves? And will their search lead them to an answer they don't want to find? A perfect jumping on point for new readers released the same day as the trade and packed with bonus back page articles only found in the single issues. Next, we have Ghosted number 19, their final confrontation between Jackson Winters and Marcus Schrecken. Both men have stared down death, but this time someone loses. We've also got Oddly Normal number 6, Oddly Gets Stuck in a Memory, Literally. Next, we have Revival number 29, Everything Changes in the Blink of an Eye, Mysteries Revealed. We've also got Rain number 4, Rain and Seth Infiltrate the Venn Stronghold Hidden in the Rift. Next, we have Run Love Kill number 1. Sought after by elements of her violent past, fugitive and assassin Rain Oshira has just 24 hours to escape a barricaded city while trying to evade a military force determined to either capture or kill her. We've also got Secret Identities number 3. A radioactive zombie leaves a scorched trail of destruction in its wake as Gaijin tries to keep her teammates from learning the truth about her connection to the creature. Meanwhile, Crosswind finds some leverage to use against one of his unsuspecting teammates. Next, we have Shudder number 11. Kate Christopher was the last of a family dynasty of explorers. Then she quit. Ten years later, she discovered she's one of who knows how many siblings. The older sister she never knew, Kalian, is after Kate's seemingly alive father and has forced Kate to help her find her mother, the only person who knows what's up with their dad. Mom's location? The world of dreams. And it's not going well. We've also got Spawn number 251. Following the reintroduction of Al Simmons in Spawn Resurrection Number 1, we dig deeper into Spawn's time away, the mystery of the word chaos, and Birch, the veteran warrior who is clearly more than he seems. As the city devolves around them, Spawn is an unlikely beacon of hope in the darkness. This bold new direction continues under writer Brian Wood and artist John Boy Myers. Next, we have Stray Bullet, Sunshine and Roses, number three. Not a tougher, colder, more feared killer enforces the streets of Baltimore than the man they call Monster. Break the rules, and the last thing you're likely to see is what's pressed hard up against the inside of his steady black eyes. Rage, the true monster, trying to rip and claw its way out from the inside. With an ironclad will and a robotic efficiency, Monster has never let the beast out unchecked. Today, though, his supreme control is going to be tested. The finger has taken down one of his people. He's lost a vital shipment of Harry's drugs. His neighbor's dog is on the third week of dying loudly. And the one girl who's seen his other side and come away unscathed, the girl that made the monster, is about to walk back into his life and twist his head around once again. And we've got Tide, number one of four, a high story unlike any before. Mega churches are being robbed for millions of dollars by a crusader hacker group known as Samaritan who's giving the money to causes that they deem more worthy. This modern day Robin Hood is being pursued by two FBI agents who actually admire their query but want to stop the theft before it escalates. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Bloodshot Reborn, number one. From New York Times bestselling writer Jeff Lemire and Red Hot Rising star Miko Suayan, Valiant Next delivers an all-new ongoing series for Valiant's most unrelenting hero. Bloodshot's nanites made him a nearly unstoppable killing machine. His enhanced strength, speed, endurance, and healing made him the perfect weapon, and he served his masters at Project Rising Spirit, a private contractor trafficking in violence, very well. Now Bloodshot is a shadow of his former self. He lives in self-imposed exile, reeling from the consequences of his past life and the recent events that nearly drove him mad. But when a rash of shootings by gunmen who appear to look just like Bloodshot begin, his guilt will send him on a mission to stop the killers, even if it means diving headlong into the violence that nearly destroyed him. 
And we've got Unity number 17, Homefront Reaches Critical Mass as Livewire takes on a deadly solo mission for the future of Unity. Facing the most challenging battle of their lives, Unity struggles to hang on. Livewire, de facto leader of the team, can barely keep her life together. How can she corral a group of lethal warriors? And if she fails, what price will the world pay? Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Instagram to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney. And I've got issues.